In this video, you are finally gonna learn some Node.js code and we're gonna kick things off by talking about modules inside of Node. Now, modules are units of functionality. So imagine I create a few functions that do something similar, like a few functions that help with math problems, things like add, subtract, and divide. I could bundle those up as a module, call it Andrew-Math, and other people could take advantage of it. What we're gonna be looking at in this video is not how to make our own module. We are gonna be looking at how we can use modules. And that is gonna get done using a function in Node called require. Require is gonna let us do three things. First, it's gonna let us load in modules that come bundled with Node.js. These are things like the HTTP module, which lets us make a web server, and the FS module, which lets us access the file system for our machine. We are also gonna be using require in later videos to load in third-party libraries, things like Express and SQLize, which are gonna let us write less code. We're gonna be able to use pre-written libraries to handle complex problems, and all we need to do is implement it by calling a few methods. And lastly, we are gonna use require to require our very own files. It's gonna let us break up our application into multiple smaller files, which is essential for building real world apps. If you have all of your code in one file, it is gonna be really hard to test, maintain, and update. Now require isn't that bad. What we're gonna be doing in this video is exploring that first use case. We're gonna take a look at two built-in modules. We're gonna figure out how to require them and how to use them. And then we're gonna move on to starting the process of building that note application. The first step we're gonna take inside of the terminal is we're gonna make a directory to store all of these files. I'm gonna navigate from my home directory to the desktop using CD desktop. Then we're going to go ahead and make a folder to store all of the lesson files for this project. Now these lesson files are going to be available in the resources section for every video. So if you get stuck or your code just isn't working for some reason, you can download the lesson files, compare your files, and figure out where things went wrong. Now we're going to make that folder using mkdir, which is short for make directory. And let's go ahead and call the folder notes node or whatever you like. We're gonna be making a note app in Node, so notes node seems appropriate. Then we'll CD into notes node and we can get started playing around with some of the built-in modules. Now these modules are built in, so there's no need to install anything in the terminal. We can simply require them right inside of our node files. The next step in the process is gonna to be to open up that directory inside of Atom I'm gonna open up that directory we just created on the desktop, and there it is. We have notes, node sitting right here. Now we are gonna to need to make a file, and I'm gonna put that file in the root of the project. It's gonna be called app.js, and this is where our application is gonna start. We will be writing other files that get used throughout the app, but this is the only file we're ever gonna be running from the terminal. This is the initialization file for our application. Now to kick things off, the first thing I wanna do is use console.log to print starting app. The only reason we're gonna do this is to keep track of how our files are executing. And we're only gonna do this for the first project. Down the line, once you're comfortable with how files get loaded and how they run, we'll be able to remove these console log statements and they aren't necessary. Now, after we call console.log starting app, the next thing we're gonna do is load in a built-in module using require. And we can get a complete list of all of the built-in modules on the Node.js API docs. To view that, head to your browser, go to nodejs.org forward slash API. When you go to this URL, you're gonna be greeted with a long list of built-in modules. What we're gonna be doing is using the file system module to create a new file and the OS module. The OS module is gonna let us fetch things like the username for the currently logged in user. To kick things off though, we will start with the file system module. We're gonna go through the process of creating a file and appending to it. Now, when you view a docs page for a built-in module, whether it's the file system one or a different module, you're gonna see a long list of all the different functions and properties that you have available to you. The one we're gonna be using in this video is fs.appendfile. 
If you click it, it'll take you to the specific documentation. And this, this is where we can go ahead and figure out how to use a pen file. Now a pen file is pretty simple. We're going to pass it two string arguments. One is going to be the file name and two is going to be the data we want to append to the file. That is all we need to provide in order to call fs.append file. Before we can call fs.append file, we need to require it. The whole point of require is to let us load in other modules. In this case, we're going to load in the fs module from app.js. Let's go ahead and create a variable that's going to be a constant using const. Since we're not going to be manipulating the code the module sends back, there's no need to use the var keyword. We'll use the const keyword. Then we're going to give it a name like fs and we're going to set it equal to require. Require is a function that's available to you inside of any of your Node.js files. You don't have to do anything special to call it. You simply call it like this. Inside of the arguments list, we're just going to pass one. Now, every time you call require, whether you're loading a built-in module, a third-party module, or your own file, you just pass in one string. In this case, we'll pass in the module name, which is fs, and we'll toss a semicolon at the end. This is going to tell Node you want to fetch all of the contents of the fs module and store them in the fs variable. At this point, we now have access to all of the functions available on the fs module, which we explored over in the docs, including fs.append file. Back in Atom, we can call append file by calling fs.append file, passing in the two arguments that we're going to use. The first one is going to be the file name. Let's go ahead and put in greetings.txt. And the second one is going to be the text you want to append to the file. In this case, we're going to append hello world. Awesome. Let's go ahead and save the file like this and run it from the terminal to see what happens. If you're running node v7 or greater, you're going to get a little warning when you run the program inside of the terminal. Now on v7, it's still going to work. It's just a warning, but this is how you can get rid of it. Above, we have the original line as we have inside of our program. Option one is adding a callback as the third argument to append file. This callback is going to get executed when either an error occurs or the file successfully gets written to. Inside of here, we have an if statement. If there is an error, we simply print a message to the screen unable to write to file. Now our second option down below, option two, is to call append file sync. Append file sync is a synchronous method. We'll talk more about that later. This function does not take the third argument. You can type it just like this and you won't get the warning. So go ahead and pick one of those two options. If you are seeing the warning, both are going to work much the same. If you are on V6, you can stick with the line up above, although you might as well use one of the two down below to make your code a little more future proof. Fear not, we're going to be talking about asynchronous and synchronous functions as well as callback functions extensively throughout the course. What I'm giving you here is just a template, something you can write in your file to get that error removed. In a few sections, you'll understand exactly what these two methods are and how they work. All right, let's go ahead and dive back in. If we do this over inside of the terminal, node app.js, we're going to see something pretty cool. Right here, we get our one console.log statement starting app. So we know the app started correctly. And if we head over into Atom, we actually see there's a brand new greetings.txt file. This is the text file that was created by fs.append file. It tries to append it to a file. If the file doesn't exist, it simply creates it. Right here, we have our message, hello world, printing to the screen. And this is fantastic. In just minutes, we were able to load in a built-in node module and call a function that lets us create a brand new file. And if we call it again by rerunning the command using the up key and the enter key, and we head back into the contents of greetings.txt, you can see this time around we have hello world twice. It appended it one time for each time we ran the program. Now this is pretty cool. We have a application that creates a brand new file on our file system. And if the file already exists, it simply adds to it. What I'd like to do though is customize this greeting. And to do that, we're going to explore one more built in module. Now we're going to be using more than just a pen file in the future. We'll be exploring other methods for now. The real goal is to understand require. 
require lets us load in the modules functionality so we can call it down below. The second module that we're going to be using is OS, and we can view it over in the documentation. Down on the left hand side, we're looking for the OS module. And on the OS module, we're going to be using the method defined at the very bottom, user info. User info gets called and returns some various information about the currently logged in user, such as the username. And this is what we're going to pull off. Using the username that comes from the OS, we're going to be able to customize that greeting. Instead of hello world, it can say hello, in this case, Andrew. To get started, we have to require OS. That means back inside of Adam, just below where I create my FS constant, I'm going to create a new constant called OS, setting it equal to require, which gets called as a function and gets passed one argument, the module name OS. From here, we can go ahead and start calling methods available on the OS module like user info. Let's make a new variable called user to store the result. The variable user is going to get set equal to os.userInfo, and we can call user info without any arguments. Now, before we go ahead and do anything with the append file line, I'm going to comment it out and print out the contents of the user variable using console.log. This is going to let us explore exactly what we get back. Over in the terminal, we can rerun our program using up and enter. And right here, you see we have an object with a few properties. We have a UID, GID, username, home directory, and shell. Depending on your OS, you're not going to have all of these, but you should always have the username property. This is the one we care about. That means back inside of Atom, we can use user.username inside of append file. I'm going to go ahead and remove the console.log statement and uncomment our call to fs.append file. Right here, where we have world, we're going to be swapping that out with user.username. Now, there's two ways we can do this. The first way is to remove world with the exclamation mark and concatenate user.username. Then we can concatenate another string using the plus operator. That's just the exclamation mark. And if we run this, everything is going to work as expected. Over in the terminal, we can rerun our app. It prints starting app. And over in greetings.txt, you should see something like this. Right here, I have hello Andrew printing to the screen. And this is brilliant. Using the FS module and the OS module, we were able to grab the user's username and create a new file storing it right here. Inside of app, we can also do this another way using an ES6 feature known as template strings. Template strings start and end with the tick operator, which is available to the left of the one key on your keyboard. Then you type things like you normally would. We're going to type hello space with the exclamation mark. And right here is where we want to put the name to insert a JavaScript variable inside of your template string. You use the dollar sign followed by an opening and closing curly braces. And right here, you can see the Atom editor actually picks up on this syntax. Then we just reference a variable like user.username. This is all it takes to use template strings. It's an ES6 feature available because you're using Node v6. It's super useful for things like this. This syntax is much easier to understand and update than the string concatenation version we just had. And if you run it, it's going to produce the exact same output. We can run it, view the text file, and this time around we have hello Andrew twice, which is brilliant. With this in place, we are now done with our very basic example. Let's take a quick moment to recap what we learned. First up, we learned that we can use require to load in modules. This lets us take existing functionality written by either the node developers or a third party library or ourselves and load it into a file so it can be reusable. Creating reusable code is essential for building large apps. If you have to build everything in an app every time, no one would ever get anything done because they would get stuck building the basics, things like HTTP servers and web servers. There's already modules for that stuff, and we're going to be taking advantage of the great NPM community. In this case, we used two built-in modules, FS and OS. We loaded them in using require, and we stored the module results inside of two variables. These variables store everything available to us from the module. In the case of FS, we used the append file method, 
And in the case of OS, we use the user info method. Together, we were able to grab the username and save it into a file, which is fantastic. With this in place, we're now ready to start creating our own files for our notes application and requiring them inside of app.js. And that is exactly what you are gonna learn how to do in the next video. I am super excited to show you how, so stay tuned. I will see you next time.